Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to 30 Minutes of Wisdom. I am your host, Robin Blake Muscari, and it is my treat to be here with you today to um, what we do is we get together twice a month and we share thought leaders to support your personal and professional development. And you know, I always like to quote Jim Rohn when he talks about um, work twice as hard on yourself as you do on your business because you are your business as entrepreneurs. Um, who we are directly ref, directly reflects in our business. So today I want to share with you a little bit about how this call started. I was gifted this book, Igniting Change, by our very own Judy Daniel. And um, I, you know me, I, I love this stuff. <laughs> and the subtitle is From Where You Are to Where You Want to Be. And many of you know that we use that definition of coaching all the time. And we talk about coaching others. Well, today we're going to talk about coaching yourself. And our special guest is um, a, a woman who has mastered it. She, she's a master of the creative process, of the change process. She's going to share her wisdom with you today. So let me share a little bit about her. Uh, she's the author of this book. Um, her, I love how she said her life has been a series of fascinating leaps off the proverbial cliff. You know, and so she's got the experience to share all of this. And she grew up in the Midwest, um, left college, and her intention uh, was her vision was being a writer in New York, but she ended up in California. And she's going to share about the story and what happened. And several, and she got a job in the entertainment industry. She was working at uh, Walt Disney Company, coordinating Mickey's 60th birthday, uh, a year-long project. And she's, and then you know, she made a shift, and she was living in those important questions of, you know, how do I have more meaning in my life? So we're going to talk about that today. And then she's um, spent 11 years in a conscious community and uh, everything changed. And so this is a woman who knows change from the core of her being. And she's going to share with us a variety of uh, resources and things today. But let me welcome Anna Cel Francesca Celestino. That is such a beautiful name. Welcome, Anna. Thank you. Nice to be here. I'm really thrilled. Thank you. It's great. And, you know, in our business, um, we bring on people that we love and care about, and they bring on their friends. And then we have this, you know, community of treasures. So um, welcome to the community here of our Live Younger uh, community and being a friend of Judy's. Oh my gosh, that's all you need to say. So um, <laughs> really glad. And you guys are long-term friends, which is really exciting. So let's start a little bit about your background because like I said, you originally, you know, when you finished college, had this vision of being a writer in New York. And what happened? Life happens. <laughs> Best does, laid plans, you know. I think, well, we're kind of starting at the end of what I want to talk about, really. What happens is I think the the personal work that I needed to do ended up getting in the way of my dreams. You know, I there I had my shortcomings, I had my insecurities, and you know, I got into a relationship. Maybe we other people have done that too. And so LA was really kind of a detour for me, but ended up, you know, you make the best of what you get. And so, you know, I figured if I want to write, I could write there as well as New York. So, you know, we, um, yeah, things happen. Things they do. And, you know, <laughs> in this crazy world that we're living in right now, you know, the work you're doing is even more important because there's two kinds of change, the change that happens to us and the change that we actually create for ourselves. And that's what we're going to talk about today, yeah. how to have the life we want based on that. So let's let's take a look at you have this really wonderful definition of what you call true change. Would you share that with everybody? Yeah, to me, there's a difference between just regular change and transformational change or true change. And regular change, you kind of move the furniture around. You know, it's just kind of taking one thing, just making it look a little different, painting the walls just a little bit different. Transformational change is where you make those changes from the inside. Um, and, you know, we all talk about this. It's doing the emotional work, doing the personal work. Um, that we need to do. And as I said, we kind of started off on the back end of, of my story here, really. But, um, it, you know, if we don't make those changes intentionally, they control our lives anyway. 
So um, the internal changes. And so that's a difference. The transformational changes where you change something on the inside. And then the more work, personal work you do that way, it begins to reflect in your life on the outside rather than trying to change the things on the outside first. So, okay. So transformational change is very different. It's we're doing the internal part that ends up manifesting in the outside. So what are some of the qualities and characteristics of what you refer to as transformational change? Uh, well, I think, you know, in my book, I talk about there being, you know, we want to, we want to create, well, in my, in my shift system course too, we want to create um, from the inside and we want to, we want to identify uh, a true vision for ourselves. And so, uh, you know, it's like, you know, actually, Robin, you, you started us off in a perfect place because in the, in the example you gave when I was in my twenties, I hadn't done the personal work and the, the external life just sort of took hold. And I went after the shiny objects versus um, really getting still, getting quiet, coming into myself, um, doing the personal work, finding out what was driving me. I um, mean, that case, you know, I, 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 you know, I was a middle child, you know, what we call the lost child. I, I wanted, you know, someone to love me. So of course I went toward the relationship toward a man who said, you know, who said all the right things and, and ended up in California instead of where I wanted to go in New York. And that happens, I think, a lot in our lives. So I think, you know, doing the personal work so that the we connect with our 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 with our hearts. And I talk a lot in my program about navigating from the heart and really mm. listening. And in my program, we use uh, what I call a, a magic word to help us get there. And that's longing, you know, to go into our hearts and ask ourselves, what am I longing for here? What mm. am I longing for in this moment? And I, I think you can feel that if you just say that to yourself, what am I longing for right now? Suddenly you're in your heart, you're in a real place that's being navigated by life instead of by the shiny objects. Thank you for saying that, because what I one of the things I love about your book is it's so practical all throughout your book. You have these great quotes. You have these great questions and exercises for people to do because it is a process. And so starting out with your vision and what do you long for? And that I don't know if it's too soon for me to get into the tolerant part or you want to finish the other characteristics for transformational change before we get into that. What's your chat? choice um no we could you uh you, we were going to talk about pressure do you want to do that now or do you want to wait go, go for it yeah i think one of the things you know that's helpful um is to to allow um pressure to build um i, I always give the example if you put a pot of water on, on the stove to boil you, you start with water and when you turn the heat up it becomes steam it transforms it becomes a different form of what it was before and that's what we're trying to do when we're creating transformational changes. We don't want to just stay the same person with all the stuff. We want to we want to turn the heat up. And when we do that, we sort of boil off the things that get in the way. So, you know, for me in that example, you know, coming to realize, you know, I had this I had this wound. I had this place in me that needed to be filled. Um that needed to be loved, that needed to recognize, you know, I was I I was you know, um, overlooked or whatever in my childhood, it, this is in my thinking, you know, and, and, but then to deal with that and to recognize that, you know, the only person who can really love me first is me. So you start there and you do that work, but as you turn the heat up, um, you, these things come to the surface. So to do that, I talk about having a container, um, for change. And so, you know, like in my 90 day um, coaching program, I say that's a container. 90 days is a container, you know, or, um, you know, uh, writing a vision for yourself for the year creates a container. This is the structure that I want to have for this year. It allows pressure to build. And then um, and, and we want to keep that container there. Let the pressure build so that all the stuff that's not true about ourselves can boil off. And then what's left is what's true. Okay, so let me be clear here. We, we want to add the pressure so the real stuff can show up. And we can do that in many different ways. 
Yeah, absolutely. So what are some other suggestions of how people can, and you know, adding pressure doesn't always sound like a good thing, but <laughs> right. it is a good thing. <laughs> it produces amazing results. So what else could we be doing? We create a vision for ourselves. We live in those questions of what we're longing. What else can we do? Because, you know, and we'll get into this in a little bit because you have this wonderful assessment for people. Um, and I think it's so true for so many that we haven't stopped to take a look at, you know, what part of our lives are we tolerating versus going for our joy, going for our vision, going for our dreams? So what else could we be doing to, you know, up the pressure to, to bring out those gifts? Well, accountability is a great thing. Um, you know, so whether it's with a friend and, you know, making a commitment to each other of, of something that you want to accomplish in a certain period of time, um, it, I'm sure within your with, within your organization, there are probably opportunities, um, you know, setting goals, things like that. Those kinds of things create can create pressure. Anything that that holds you accountable or sets a framework around a period of time. Love it. Love it. And in yeah. this group, I just want you to know, Anna, um, we are in this very special community that you're visiting with today. And these are people that are really committed. They show up day in and day out to do the work on themselves. And it does reflect in their business. So they're so open and receptive to this kind of work. And I've just witnessed, I mean, that's one of my favorite parts of this profession. I think I talked to you about this. It's, it creates a container, you know, it's, it's a safe place. So when you're talking about container, what else do you refer to as the container, you know, having accountability and support, what else supports that safe space for people to go to a place that they've not been before? Because I know if people go too far, it's not safe. And then yeah. people retract. So where's that fine line of the safe container that allows people to blossom into who they are versus it's too scary. That's too far. I got to retreat. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I think having, having some guidance or support. So I know like in my program, you know, we create a container and I turn up the pressure, but you know, I serve as a guide there to help sort of um, mo monitor how everybody's doing and how much pressure is enough and how much pressure isn't enough. In my book, I talk about a way to, um, to shift the pressure and that's with proximity. And this is very, very, very handy. So um, if we're trying to make a change, um, we want that pressure to be there. And in my book, I talk about three steps to creating transformational change. And the first step is to commit to coming from a place of love. Because when you do that, that puts you in the moment. The only feeling that you can have in the moment is love or contentment or peace. Um, if you're worried, you're thinking about the future. If you're sad, you're hanging out in the past. You want to come into the present moment. So committing to coming from a place of love. But that's not always easy. Let's say you're in a relationship that's just not working, you know, or you have an issue in that relationship and you just kind of want to strangle the person. Then the second step is proximity. And it's finding your right proximity so that you can um, maintain that feeling of love. So that might mean having to step away, having to step back so that you can manage the pressure so it's not too much, um, so that you have just enough pressure where you're still in, but you're not blowing the container. The okay. other thing, sometimes we're too detached, maybe in a relationship or a job or um, work that we're doing, we might be too detached. And then what we need to do is change our proximity and step in, connect a little bit more, take a risk. So you can monitor that pressure by just shifting your proximity. Okay. Help me understand this proximity a little bit more. So proximity from my perspective is the, you know, the closeness that you have to something. How else would you define that just so I can better understand it? Well, I think that's it. It's either stepping in or stepping away, okay. getting closer or moving out. And you're doing that so that you're, you're, you find just that sweet spot where you're keeping the pressure on and allowing things. It's like that heat on the stove. You want to keep the heat on. You don't want it to boil over, but you want to keep it, the heat on enough. So that's what we're trying to do. If we're trying to create transformational change and we want to boil off 
all the stuff that's not true. And we want what's not true to surface, say in a relationship, you know, you maybe you've been in a relationship that's not working, or there's a part of it that's not working, but you keep avoiding it. You know, you keep, you don't want to talk about it. You don't want a confrontation. Yeah. Right. So that, but that doesn't change anything. Right. It maybe, maybe it changes it for a week. You have a talk changes for a week, goes back the way it was. You want, you want something really to change. And that comes from changing your perspective, changing how we see things, how we feel about things. So you want to keep that pressure on. I want to keep the pressure on to have myself either have a a conversation or, or um, see something about myself that I hadn't seen before. And we do that by, you know, stepping in or stepping away, finding that balance that allows us to um, let the truth kind of surface. I love that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I want to step back just a little bit because you talked about the step, the first step, which is, you know, being in that place of love and all throughout your book, you talk about being in the presence and being present. And, and, you know, that's like the ultimate, you know, place to be in our power. But what transpired in your life, Anna, that really had you become aware of that power of being in the present and being that true change can only happen from, you know, the present moment and from now? Yeah, one of my spiritual teachers had had uh, written something about the um, change can only happen in the moment. <laughs> and it hit me like a ton of bricks. It's like, well, duh, you know, that's the only place it can happen. I, I had an experience while I was at Disney where um, I was also writing while I was doing a marketing job at Disney. And I, I was writing scripts on the side. And I was in a meeting, a development meeting. And I, I wasn't really part of the development team, but I had this script that I, you know, that I would have been perfect for the Disney Sunday movie. And I was in the meeting. It was long story, but it was a lot of high powered people in that meeting, including Michael Eisner, who was the CEO of the company. So I was a little bit intimidated. I was much younger and, um, and, and they were desperate for scripts for the Disney Sunday movie. And Michael Eisner said, does, you know, he was like torturing the, the development team. Nobody had ideas. They didn't have any scripts. And I knew I had this perfect script for, for the show. And Michael said, does anybody have an idea? It was like life was just pulling the curtain back and saying, this is your moment. This is your moment. And I was so terrified and so intimidated that I couldn't speak. Oh, no. And Yeah. I couldn't oh. speak. And I felt that moment. It was as if life was saying, we're holding this open as long as we can say something. And I couldn't get the words out of my mouth and the moment passed. And so, you know, later I went to the develop, de- development department. I said, I've got this script. Um, they, they, re- they turned it down. Years later, I'm watching, flipping through channels. And all of a sudden I say, gosh, that, that, that movie looks familiar. They'd actually made my movie and yeah, they'd made, it's, that's a whole other story. (laughs) They had made my movie and it was a very obscure story. So I know, you know, nobody else thought of this. It was a historical piece. Anyway, they made my, so that movie needed to be made. There was a moment there. My point is if we miss, you know, if we miss the moment, sometimes we can go back and fix it, but ideally there's that moment when change can happen something can open. So who knows where my life would have gone in that point had I sold that script, right? Wow. That's amazing. So being present in the moment and taking advantage of, you know, it's, it happens, you know, and that became probably a huge life lesson for you, um, that situation. Okay. So we've got the grounding of transformational change in love, and then we move into the next part, uh, proximity, proximity. And yeah. then the, the third part is courage. <laughs> so you've done there all this go. work, right you've there. got your vision, you know what you want, you know, you've done the personal work. And here we are. This is the, this is the point, right? That door opens in that moment. Do you have the courage to step through? 
Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't, but you, there are ways to um, help us to, uh, to um, um, work through the fear. And so um, in, I think in, the, in my book, I talk about risk and negative payoff. So you can ask yourself in that moment, what's the risk for me? Um, what's the risk for me doing this? Like, what's the worst thing that could happen? Okay. And then we ask, what's the negative payoff? Like, what do I get for keeping things the same? I get to stay small. I get to stay safe in that moment in my story. I got to stay safe for the moment. Recently, I've been thinking, you know, I think there's a third question to ask there. What's at risk for not doing this? And so I almost want to just eliminate the first two and just ask that question. What's at risk? If I'd been able to ask myself that in that moment, in that meeting, I think I might have found my voice there. So this is really, really important because courage, like what does it take for us to move into a new place? And it's got to be safe. Yeah. You know, like you feeling intimidated by having Michael Eisner in the room could have this feeling of, I don't quite feel safe enough, you know, with this, you know, important person there or whatever. So what other ways do you support people or encourage people to build their own courage in addition to what you just shared? What else well, can I, you be doing to step into some of those new places? Yeah, well, I think, you know, again, if you look at, you know, now we've, uh, we've laid out some stories about my life so we can use those as examples, you know, had I been doing the, the personal work, the emotional work, like I would not be intimidated now to sit in that room and be with Michael Eisner and present my story idea, because I don't feel like that wounded child anymore. I don't feel like I'm unsafe. I don't, you know, so I think really Robin, it's, it's doing that personal work and, and however you do that, whether it's, um, you know, I've got a really simple tool in my coaching program called the emotional workout. And basically we take a situation and we just ask about that. What do I feel sad about? What do I feel angry about? What am I worried about? What do I feel embarrassed about? And we just, you know, work those emotions really becoming more and more aware of how I'm feeling. You know, how do I feel right now? And even, even if we're afraid, if in the moment I say, I'm aware that I'm feeling afraid, I could say, look, I'm really nervous about saying this, but this is what I have to say. You know, we're more in control in the moment and we can show up more powerfully if we're aware of, of what we're thinking and feeling. Beautiful, beautiful. So what I consistently hear and see and experience from you and your book is um, asking ourselves questions, living yeah. in the questions. And to me, that's one of my absolute favorite personal development tools of all times <laughs> is when we live in a question and, you know, you talk about the disciplines of, you know, journaling and meditation and, you know, a variety of things, but taking the time and, and creating, and you've got so many great questions in the book uh, to really live in those questions because the, the work that I come from with a company called uh, Enlightened Leadership was that as a facilitator, the answers were always in the room. Everyone has the answers to their own situations. And our job is to find those right questions, you know, and they can open up and unlock so much um, just by living in the question. And then, you know, taking the time to journal. Are there other activities that you recommend for people to help access more of those things that need the work? You know, I think participating in collective activities is a great way to find out about yourself. You know, it's, um, it's, you find out whether you're shy, whether you're, you know, um, a, an extrovert, an introvert, and how to work with those things. So I think participating in groups is a really good way to do that work. Um, you know, even, I guess, reading, you know, reading books that have, that ask questions. I, I so agree with you about the questions and, and, and people having their own answers there. And when I was working on my book, it's like, I, I knew I was working with a, with a sort of esoteric topic, like transformational change, but I'm only interested in these things if they make a difference in our everyday lives. 
You know, I want to be able to show up more powerfully in my life. I want to be able to really share my gifts. I want to be able to fulfill my dreams. And so, you know, I really worked hard at translating the sort of spiritual speak into how are these things really grounded and useful right now? Beautiful, beautiful. So in, you know, in your offerings, um, you know, talking about from where you are to where you want to be, I think we need to start out looking about where are we? And you have this, um, this gift that we'll put in the chat. It's, a, it's just a, a worksheet on tolerance. Would you, and, and what we're tolerating, could you talk about how that really supports people being clear on where they are to help them get to that vision of where they want to go and why that's so important? Yeah, I'd love to. So the, the, the tolerations list is the first thing I always give in any of my, pro, any of my coaching programs. It's like, do this first. <laughs> Make a list of everything that you're tolerating, because what we're tolerating is really where all of our energy is going, or not all of our energy, but that's where energy is leaking out, is in the things that we're tolerating. And and I think that the reason we feel like we're tolerating them, why why they sort of strike us that way, it's like, you know, um, for somebody else, it might not bother them at all. But for us, if we feel like we're tolerating something, I think it's because we know that there's, it should be, a, it could be a different way. This isn't right. This isn't part of my vision. This isn't the way that I want this to be. But sometimes identifying what we don't want is easier to start off with. And then um, in, the, in, in the worksheet that I'm offering, it helps you to flip that list and take what you're tolerating and flip it over and say, well, if I don't want this, what do I want? And it helps us to flesh out a really clear vision of what we do want. I just love that. It's just so incredibly simple, but wow, it works. It's simple and it's profound. And I don't, I think a lot of us um, forget to do that part. We're really good at sometimes, not always where we want to go, but really acknowledging where we are and what is it that we're tolerating and putting up with? Yeah. And I think that can open up so many possibilities by just, you know, not judging ourselves, but just getting a solid, honest assessment. This is where we start. Yeah. Right. Yep. And then, absolutely. Yeah. And then we have the love and the proximity and the courage to do something about it. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Right. Yep. I'm getting it. I'm getting it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I put in the chat section so everyone has access to that, um, and we'll make it available in our newsletter and uh, uh, for everybody also, uh, is Anna's um, worksheet on tolerations, and we do invite everyone. Um, <laughs> Jennifer just said, this is incredibly igniting. <laughs> <laughs> So I, and that's, I love it. That's such a great title. When did you get the title for your book? Actually, I had a different title for the book. I can't even remember what it was now, but then I had the opportunity to go, go and give a talk. And as I was preparing for the talk, all of a sudden I started thinking about how does fire work? How does, you know, how does, what is this? How does, that's why I've got the flame on my book. It's like, oh, this is about how you ignite, how I, I went through the process of how does, how do you start a fire <laughs> and then how do you start a fire in your life? So that's where it came from. I love it. Igniting. And all throughout your book, I love your use of metaphors. Oh, it's, thank you. They're, they're, well, they just, um, they take us to other dimensions, I think, when we speak in metaphors. So I, I hate to say we're running to the end of our time. So you do have a course, and I'd love you to talk about your course. And it sounds amazing. And I'm putting that in the chat also. Um, and it's, I will, I will get it in there. So why don't you talk about it? All right. And, and then I'll try to get that up in the chat so people have access. It's called the full shift system. It's an e-course and you, you normally offer it for 197 and you have a special offer for our group today for those that are ready to make that shift. Yeah. Why don't you talk about it? And I want to say, this is the Judy Daniel special. Okay. Because I'm, <laughs> I was like, well, I want to do something really good for my friend and her friends and Robin now a new friend. So I yes. wanted to do something really special. Honestly, this course 
is usually $197. And if I discount it, I usually put it down to $147. So I've never sold it for this price. This is only for you guys. But it's the shift system is really, you know, we talked about in the book, the um, coming from a place of love and proximity and courage. I kind of take a little bit different take on that in my, in my course in the shift system. The first step is about creating a vision from the heart and that's working with the longings. What am I longing for? So you get a clear vision so that you can navigate from the heart. What do I want from the heart, not just from the head. And then the second part of the program is what's been stopping you. So it's just another version of proximity and turning the heat up. Um, and we have tools to help really simple, again, simple, but powerful tools to help you find out what's been stopping me. I can say I want a relationship, but if I'm not ready inside or I'm afraid or whatever, you know, it's not going to happen. And then I, the third part of it is courage. And I give you tools for that. So it really walks you through transformational change. And these are tools that you can use the rest of your life to make changes. I love it. I remember years ago, uh, do you remember... Um the book on creative visualization with Shakti Gawain. You remember that? Yeah. One? Yeah. And, yep. and that's what she was talking about is um, she was a client of mine when I was at a consulting firm. And I said, well, I want this relationship that has some of this person and some of this person. And she said, Robin, you need to be the person you want to attract. Yeah. And that was like a huge awakening for me and a huge gift from her to me. Um, yeah. From whatever publishing, for those of you that are old enough, most of you, I think, are. It was a, a book called Creative Visualization. So it was life changing for a lot of us. Yeah. yeah. So, any yeah. other final comments before we open up for some QA, uh, Anna? I think just, you know, it's been a pleasure to be here with you. I really appreciate the invitation and it's fun to get together and talk about change, my favorite topic. Uh it's one of mine too. <laughs> and you, you, you posture it and position it in a different way than I've held it before, but the igniting part and, and we get to be our own match, but having those characteristics to create the container to make it safe enough to do it. And you give all these wonderful tools. And like I said, this book is filled with wonderful questions and metaphors and exercises. And so the, um, the link for the book is in the chat. For some reason, I'm not able to get the link for um, uh, your course, but I will get it to everyone in the newsletter and it'll be in our Facebook group for everybody. I, I'm, I'm in a, I don't know why it's not copying and pasting like everything else did. I'll try I think I can put it in Robin. Let me see. If you can, that would be wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. So this, the full shift course, vision from the heart, what's been stopping you, the courage to act. So notice that these are part of her structure and then, you know, tools to stay in the flow. Cause that's, oh, I love that you use the term trim tab. Oh, that was one of my, <laughs> that was one of my nicknames. And I love, uh, you know, before we open up for Q and A, why don't you just share what trim tab means? Cause a lot of people have heard it, but they don't know what it means. Yeah. The trim tab uh, was, um, oh gosh. Um, can't, Boats but Mr. Planes. Fuller um, started talking about that where you have say like an ocean liner, and to try and turn that ocean liner, it's really hard. Um, so they, there's a there's a rudder, but then on the rudder, there's a trim tab. It's just a little piece that just, if you just turn the trim tab a little bit, it begins to turn the rudder and that turns the whole ocean liner. So in relation to change, you just have to change little things. You don't have to change everything. And I, I'm like the queen <laughs> queen of doing the least, the smallest thing that you can. I just think sometimes it just start, if, if it's overwhelming, start with the very simplest thing that you can do and you will create change in your life. It'll start to move. That is, thank you for sharing that because a lot of people think, oh my God, this is so big and you know, it becomes <laughs> overwhelming and then we don't do it. But it's the little things done consistently that create that trim tab. Because when you're starting here and you make a little change over time, it creates a big change. Right. And that's the trim tab, like you said, in a boat and in a plane, it's the little things that can make a big difference over time. So Anna, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This <laughs> Pleasure. Is fabulous. And, and, and so we want to open up and see if anyone has, um, <laughs> uh, Jennifer said, I like tweak, don't freak. 
<laughs> That's wonderful. So if anyone has questions, you can put them in the chat for Anna. And, um, and again, this is such a gift for me to be introduced to Anna through Judy. And this is for all of you. If you have treasures in your life like an Anna and, and want to share them with our community, please share them with me and we can bring them on our 30 Minutes of Wisdom so we can expand who we get exposed to. So let's see if anyone's got any questions here. Um, well, uh, uh, David Sunwolf says, I am more awakened, thanks. Where there is flow, there is go. The only <laughs> thing that is permanent is change. You are awesome. <laughs> Love your metaphors, analogies. I feel I had a growth session and confirmation as well. <laughs> and, and so uh, Mary's asking how much is, um, how much is her course offer? Uh, it's 97 for you guys. I guess we forgot um, and, that part. <laughs> yeah. And that's going to ex expire um, February 10th. But um, yeah, normally it's 197. Sometimes okay. I discount it to 147, Great. but for you Great. guys, $97. Okay. And, and if you, and it's a video course, it's like 20 videos that are between three and 10 minutes long. Um, so it walks you through everything. They're kind of fun. There's lots of pictures and there's workbooks and worksheets. Um, that you get to, you know, interact with, um, to, um, to integrate the work. So, yeah. No, I love your style. <laughs> your, your style is very engaging, very interactive. Um, and it's thought provoking. And again, it's all these great questions that you offer for people. Cause if all people just did was journal the questions, their lives can change. Hmm. So let's see, what are the dates? Oh, it's a self-study course. So yeah. Um, yeah, you can do it on your own time. And uh, that's really exciting. And so uh, the course is 97 reduced from 147. And again, Anna, you want to try to put the link in? Uh, yeah, I'll put the link. In. I did put it in. I'll put it oh, in. Oh, you again. did? Okay. Yeah, there, there okay. it is again. Okay. Uh, uh, my page says the February 14th. Yes, I was going to do the 14th and then I changed it to the 10th, but I could go with the 14th. So okay. whatever works. Well, yeah. Valentine's Day. That's a nice yeah. time. And, yeah. and taking yeah. action quickly. So any other final comments or questions from anyone? Um, I have a question. What does one do when strong feelings arise? That's from Sarah. Yeah, well, I think, first of all, it's good to be aware that you're having the feelings. If you can identify what the feelings are. And I like, again, I like really basic, simple stuff. Angry, sad, worried, embarrassed, just like happy. Just stick with the basics. Identify what's coming up. And then, you know, there's always journaling. The proximity piece is good if you need to step away, if you're like feeling too angry and can't put the words together in the moment, you can change your proximity, take, say, you know what, I'm feeling really overwhelmed right now. I'm feeling really angry right now. I just need a break and I'll come back and we'll talk about it. Um, but I think, do, you know, using um, the process to just figure out what do I feel angry about? What do I feel sad about? Get behind it, you know, try and find out what's behind it. Great, great. Um, let's see. No. Uh, Michelle said she clicked the link in the chat and there's nothing there. So we'll make sure we get that to everybody. Um, yeah. Okay. Maybe she didn't have it set to everyone. Oh, oh maybe. It, no, it was. It was set to everyone. Hmm. Yeah, Michelle clicked it. And um, so we'll make sure everyone has that. And uh, Mary Page says, how exquisite to describe the curtain open and shutting. And then someone else was given the, I can't read that word, unction. Um, but, you know, the, all these wonderful metaphors, we have opportunities every day and every moment. And this has been such a gift for our community, Anna. Thank you. And thank you, Judy Daniel, for introducing yeah. our community to Anna. We want to hold you close and thank you so much. And, and um, I really appreciate all of you being here and your willingness to do the work because as Jim Rohn says, <laughs> work twice as hard on yourself as you do in your business because you are your business. So thank you, everyone. Thanks, Robin. Yes, wonderful to be with you, Anna. I'm excited to, you know, dig in deeper and do more of the questions because, I mean, I've been really having fun. And it's a book that you can flip through or you can, you know, kind of read the whole thing, but it's been fun for me to do both. And, um, and thank you for the courage that you have to do the work so you can share it with all of us. Okay. Thank you.
Bye-bye. Right. Bye. Thanks, everybody.